it is the time for the meat, the chunk, the sizzle, and we are back in the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Andy and I saw a movie last week. You might have heard of it. We've been pumping it up for several months now. It was on the schedule, slated. It did not get delayed. We're so glad. And it is Marvel's Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Let's give it up. Claps all around. Claps all around. What an epic, epic film. The 29th title in the MCU. PC Mike, you just want to get it out of the way. We're telling you about this thing today. Yeah, I didn't see it again. You didn't see it. You gave us the preface. You said it hasn't moved the needle for you yet. You're going to listen to our review today, spoiler filled, and it might make it on your list one day. But either mm-hmm. way, I'm glad that you were honest and you didn't go see a movie that you weren't ready to see. Yeah, I, I was actually busy that night, but I had other days to see it and I didn't. So, Well, here's the thing, too, though. You for you, you'd have to go to the movies. Like now, you can just wait and like, and you know, they'll probably do premiere access, or maybe after forty five days, is it just going to be free? I don't know, because that's what that's what's happening. If you're not aware, this is in theaters right now. You should go see this thing. If you haven't, if you if you haven't, spoiler alert, go watch it. Hit pause right now. Come back if you have. Get ready. We're going to break it wide open. And I thought it'd be fun to go ahead and talk about how this thing did in terms of the box office. It's very different than what happened with. Black Widow, which came out in May. That was the simultaneous release. Uh, what happened after that? A big lawsuit from Scarlett Johansson about how <laughs> it went down. So they decided to go a different route, only theatrical release. But in 45 days, I believe this will be on Disney+. Plus. What I don't know is if it'll be premiere access or if it'll be free. So maybe we can try to answer that for the fans when we wrap this okay. up. All right, from Insider. This is going to just be starting off with just how the numbers are going in terms of box office dollars. The article reads here from Lauren Edmonds, Marvel's Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi, apologies, smashed box office records with a $90 million haul over Labor Day weekend. Those are domestic numbers. So we're saying that uh, looks like the movie will finish the four-day weekend having earned over $90 million in the U.S. That's breaking the Labor Day box office. Uh, Shang-Chi, which is the MCU's first Asian-led superhero film, debuted on September 3rd, according to Variety, Labor Day weekend, typically slow, but Shang-Chi amassed $75.5 million from 4,300 theaters in just three days. Pretty epic amazing. numbers. Yeah, just amazing. Disney projects the film will add $14.5 million more on Monday. And if you're curious what that previous record was for Labor Day weekend, that was Halloween in 2007, and it made about $30.6 million. That's so crazy. It blew it out of the water. I'm shocked that Rob Zombie's Halloween had a record at all. What in the world? Yeah, of all the movies that did so well, but like they said, typically a slow weekend, so you're already seeing a massive shift in the trend of movie watching on Labor Day weekend. Typically the end of summer, people are kind of over it by then. And this is like a post-pandemic world. People, like, no one cared. Everybody's like, we're going to see it. I mean, we went and saw it first night. Who releases a Halloween movie in September? Just a little early. Just wait a little bit. <laughs> Just a Let's little get bit to Spooktober. Longer. It's like days away. It's like the pumpkin spice latte. It came out in August this year. That's true. Um, if you're wondering what it did globally, Variety, Rep- Variety reported that the film made $146.2 million. Uh, and then a little bit about ba- Black Widow here, actually. Uh, you know, they did the simultaneous release in theaters, and on Disney, Shang-Chi has a staggered rollout. The, del- the film will play in theaters for its first 45 days before debuting on Disney+. Plus. This still doesn't say if it'll be free. And this is a quote from Hollywood Reporter, uh, actually an interview with Kevin Feige. The proof is in the movie. Quote, and we swing for the fences as we always do with the amount of creative energy we put in in the budget. There's no expense spared to bring the origin story to the screen. Let's talk about the story. Mike's going to help us out here. I'm really excited to bust this thing wide open as a brand new MCU film. Andy, just give me your gut reaction. What was your experience watching this in IMAX on Thursday night? Well, remember when I said last week that I just have a weird feeling about how great this is going to be? Yes, you did. And I, as soon as I said that, I was like, this is going to disappoint now, isn't it? But it did not at all. Yeah, we're going to use that applause button a lot. It could be. I, I've, I've debated a lot. It might be one of my top five favorite of MCU's overall, maybe. Top. It's definitely top five solo movies. That's it's huge. It's close to top five overall. I can't tell. That's I, a I huge honestly statement. have to see it again, maybe a few more times to say that. Yeah. As I've seen all the other ones that many times. But 
I'm not there yet, but I'm telling you that I had so much fun with this movie. A brand new story, a brand new character. You have no idea what to expect. I went in with level expectations. Spoiler alert for the film. Just going to get into it. I'm with you, too. Just my gut reaction. Loved it. Had a lot of fun. I just wanted to see how well this retained in our brains. And we're just going to move to it real quick with a little help with some names. So here we go. This movie, I love how it opens up. It basically drops you in to a story about a man that is found. He found. They don't tell a lot about these things, but he finds these 10 rings a thousand years ago. And he is basically one of the biggest villains the world has ever seen. This will inevitably become the Mandarin, which you'll, you've heard of in Iron Man 3, this big terrorist entity that you're going to come to find out. You know, that was the fake one. This guy was also other ones, too. I believe he was like, maybe, did they say he was Kangas Kong? Or like, maybe somewhere in the same realm of basically world domination is what this guy's all about. And these rings that go on his arms. Behind he, the scenes, like, crime lord, basically. Base, well, yes, as he gets more and more power yeah. and he lives more in the spotlight over a thousand years. But like previously, you know, where they drop you into this movie, it's I have these 10 rings. They give me the power of the gods. What does that even mean? Basically, you have energy coming out of your hands and you can use it in all sorts of ways. You can use it as energy blast. He uses it as like kind of like almost like whiplash in Iron Man 2. Yeah, yeah. M- moving the powers kind of like that. And he can like use it to make himself fly. He can shield himself. And he is a world dominator. And the narrator, there was a narrator in the beginning. Yeah, it was his, his wife. It was his wife? Yeah. She says, like, you know, he, you know, someone finds power like this, it can go one of two ways, either a good guy or a bad guy. And essentially, this guy's kind of a bad guy. And once he decides, as on, he's on this journey of world domination, he decides, I'm going to, I found out about this place on Earth that no one has been able to, like get to yet no one it's the last place on earth that could be seized and overrun by me because i'm just hungry for power that's all he wants it's his main thing this guy and i don't think they even say his name in the beginning but maybe we should go ahead and get it out of the way what's this guy's actual name and the, the character name when woo when woo yep played by uh anybody let's see here when woo played by he was an amazing actor i think this is like maybe his debut film tony long tony long L E U N G. Nice. Lang. And we'll, we're going to do the best with our na- with these names. You know, we're just going to give it the good old college try. He goes to this magical place and he finds a woman there. Basically, this is where you meet the jungle that spits people out. Yes. The strangest forest ever. The strangest forest ever. The jungle's moving. The trees are moving. He tries to get there. He loses, like, the men that drove him there. They die, get thrown off a cliff, but he makes it through. And we get the most beautiful it, slow motion. Just crazy, like almost felt like a dance, but fight scene between him and this woman, the protector of this village that's just tucked in the middle of the way of the jungle. Right? Yeah. I was like, this is what this movie's going to be. I'm I'm here for it. Oh my gosh. Just beaut epic. The music, like you've never seen anything, you've never seen a fight scene like this in your entire life. Maybe if you've watched any film remotely like this, you have. For me personally, this was a new experience. I was like, this is, I've never seen. The movement, the slow, the pattern, the color, um, and what happens? He falls in love, and that's when she says, "And that's when you were born." These are the parents of Shang Chi. Boom! I just got goosebumps. Sean, aka Sean. Mm-hmm. Like that was, I loved it so much because so many superhero movies do this, where they like try to open up with some narration, and it's just cheesy. It doesn't work. Like, I feel like they tried to do it in Thor The Dark World, which I love the opening like that. They describe the Dark Aether and the Dark Elves. People, like, don't... I lo- I like that, but I can see how people think it's a little corny. Not here. This was so cool. So you basically get this woman th- from the jungle who has, like, wind powers. She can control, like, wind, kind of like Avatar. Right? Yes. And then he's got the rings. They have this kid. His name's Shang-Chi, and you find out, what did he do? He moved away when he was, like, 14. He's in the United States, and he lived his life since then. He goes by Sean now. He has a best friend named Katie. And Mike, this is what um, I can't even tell you this. Sean and Katie, they're like 31 or something in this movie. Mm-hmm. And they're valet parking drivers is their full-time job. They just party. And they party. So are they actually – are they 31, like that's their age in the movie? I, or I think so, right? Yeah, like 30 movie, years old, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. They're just like – 
bur- burnouts, kind of, but like they won't I- admit it to themselves. And they, they live in San Francisco, right? They live in California. I think it's San or, Francisco. Yeah. San Maybe Francisco burnout. escapes burnout San Francisco. Is, is not a good, well, good burnout, choice of words. Well, burnout. I know what you mean, though. Like they're they're part they're booze hounds. Yeah. Like they literally they're getting off work and they're like, oh, we got a big shift tomorrow. And she goes, yeah, I guess we better get home and get to bed. And they're just like best friends. Or and he, and he goes, or, and they're at a bar just singing karaoke. <laughs> I don't know what all they sing. I want to say like Hotel California. We'll ma- come back to that. Maybe some Bon Jovi. We'll come back to this bar later. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and this is the best part. It's like this guy just, they're just trying to get, get by, have fun. And it's kind of business as usual for just like two minutes. And you're almost like, okay, we're going to get to know this guy. And we'll meet all his family. And no, they're on a city bus like the next day. And out of nowhere, these four goons attack Sean on the bus. And at this point, you're like, you don't know anything. You don't know what happened to him as a kid. You just know that this is the son of these two mystical beings, and here we are a thousand years later, and, you know, th- well, 30 years later or whatever, and just attacks him out of nowhere, and Katie's next to him, and he immediately is an amazing fighter. He's just, he's always been an amazing fighter. He, like, you can tell it's just in his bones. He ends up facing off with a guy that has one arm. It's a metal. Razor fist. A razor fist is his name? Yes. Mm-hmm. Amazing. It's like, it's like a hot blade, and they end up, like, cutting this bus in half. Greatest, like, five-minute action sequence of him taking on six dudes owning them katie ends up driving the bus it's complete chaos they get away they're just fine and katie's just like who are you what is going on and he goes i have to get out of here i'm leaving town all in the meantime one of the guys from that was in spider-man far from home Uh uh-huh um he was a like a side character that i think he was like just videotaping events at one thing so yes. he was on the bus videotaping the whole thing <laughs> he goes so that's what's up guys cool we're live here crazy fight scene happening here on the city bus this guy's got a metal arm i don't know what's going on and uh, yeah so he and it goes viral so yeah so everybody and they call him uh bus boy yep that's like his name for a while and he realizes he goes my father sent those men after me and i have to go get my sister and katie's like i'm going with you this is insane and like she's like you know i can leave like all i got is my valet parking job Necklace got stolen. Don't forget that. His necklace gets stolen. He's got a green necklace on, and it's time to go find his sister. We get a little bit more exposition here. He goes, listen, I'll tell you a little bit about my life. What's he tell her? My dad has trained me to be an assassin ever since my mom died whenever I was like eight. That's all you get. You don't really know how she died. She just died. He trained her to be a killer. Uh, He gave him a knife when he was 14, and he goes, there's one guy you got to go kill, and then you come right back. What do you do instead? He just, well, he left. And we'll talk about what happened later. This is where we get my favorite sequence of the movie, Andy. When they go to find the sister at the underground. Well, you don't know what it is yet. You just know it's like a place where she might be. And you get in there. And what is it? It's an fight club. underground fight club for like anybody and everybody, but especially enhanced individuals. And you get a lot of Easter eggs here. I hope maybe you, somebody has some notes on them, but I'll try to name what I can. There's a Black Widow in there. Fighting somebody off to the side, like fighting like maybe a I, mystic arts I did fighter. Not even catch that. Yep, there's a black widow in there somewhere. Um, there's there's more than that. Like I wish I could remember them all. But basically, you're seeing just like different. Like I want. That's why I want to go see this movie many times because in that fight club scene, there's so many different characters in the background having like separate fights. And the main one that you get brought up to is Wong, Benedict Wong from Doctor Strange. Yep. From all the movies, essentially, here he is. He's facing off. I'm gonna. I need a confirmation here. Is it Abomination? Yeah. Are we sure? He was voiced by the same guy. What? Even grunts. That was the same guy. Phase Zero. Thank you, Brandon Davis. Comicbook.com. Because I listened. They had uh, Simu Liu on their show yesterday. I watched it live on Twitch. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, it was awesome. I was in the chat heavy. Good, good. <laughs> I was like a maniac. <laughs> yes, perfect. <laughs> but uh, it was awesome. Yeah, and they had the director from the Destin. Destin, yeah. what's his name? I loved it. Um, oh my gosh, what was his name? Cretton. Destin Daniel, Cretton. Daniel. Uh, Destin Daniel Cretton. Destin Daniel Cretton, director of the film. So he, he was on Phase Zero. So what were you gonna say? They were talking about what? Um, oh my god, I forgot already. You were saying <laughs> we were talking about um Abomination. And oh the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, the the actor. Oh my god, what was his, what is his name? Like the guy from in the Incredible Hulk. Yeah, he he. They literally brought him in to do grunts. Are you serious? And the the face acting. That's or a, the face mapping. That is so cool. 
So well, this is him. The reason I questioned it was because he has like fish like ears almost. Yeah. And I just didn't really remember that from the Incredible Hulk, but I guess this movie's been like it's been like ten it's been a long time. It's been like ten years. <laughs> he looks more like that in comics. So do you think that, he got that might be the reason? And it's been so long. Like it's been a long time. Do you think he got blipped and came back or do you think he's just been alive? <laughs> I don't know. There's so many questions, like especially like wh- where did they go after it? Like, the well, fight. so what happens? Wong fights this thing. He wins. He does kind of like a uh, a ring hole portal, <laughs> ring hole, <laughs> ring hole portal, and it punches, knocks himself out, and then he walks out with him, and he goes, "You got to work on that footwork, remember?" And they're like kind of friends, it seems like, and they go through the portal, and you can just kind of see through the portal, like maybe like a library or something, or like more of like a high tech office. Like yeah, there was like cool lighting, like an Avengers office almost. I thought the Sanctum Santorum at first. I don't think it is though. I think it's. I think it was something different. And so he, I think we're gonna find out eventually. I mean, we have She Hulk coming up. Could be Multiverse of Madness. We might find out. But Wong's building a team. Who knows? Yeah, it or, seems ma- like maybe. I don't know. I, I, there's just what's what's the reason? What's the reason? What uh, what has Abomination been doing for this whole time? I want to find out, and I hope we see him again. Um. All right. So we will. We get to. Shang Chi's got to fight. All right, he gets spotted as bus boy in this thing. They're like, "Hey, you're here. You're gonna have to fight. It's the best way that to find your sister. I'll tell you where she is right after you do this." He gets in the ring, and it turns out to be his sister. I called it a little predictable. I go, "It's gonna be his sister." I just yep. whispered that to Carrie. I go, It'll be his sister. <laughs> I I agree. And what happens? They fight. Long story short, they got a bad history because she's mad at him for leaving when she was a kid. He left when he was he was a kid. And she's like still got hard feelings about it. She even abandons him because what happens? There's a this was all a trap. Right? She goes, he goes, Dad Dad's coming for us. He already came for me. He took my necklace. She has a necklace and she's like, uh oh. And right then, people bust into the building. Awesome fight scene on the poles on the scaffolding. The scaffolding on the side of the building. Oh yeah. And she That comes, was one of my top five parts of the movie. That so, was so intense. Katie, like on the uh uh, what's her name? The actress, uh, Aquafina. Aquafina. Yeah, she's just on that pole and it's falling and it's falling so far and it's bending so far. I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. It was. I and he's was like, so... I'm coming, and he's like swinging. I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. It was fighting for the first 45 minutes. Thank God he didn't take your pee break during that part. Well, I did. I did the best. I can't wait to talk about my pee break. I could. I can. I can win a gold medal for this pee break. <laughs> it was the perfect time. Um. Long story short, the dad catches up with the da- the with Shang, and I don't remember the sister's name. Oh, that was uh Z Z Lang. Is that is the character? Z Lang. Yeah, the, yeah, because yeah, Shang yes, Chi yes. and Z Lang. Yep. And do anybody know who plays Z Lang? The Janger Zhang. <laughs> nice. And the, he he comes in the dad with the ten rings, puts them both like kind of on the ground, and he's like, "All right, here we go." Takes him back home to his home area. I don't even know where he lives, to be honest. They go to his house, though, and he gives him the backstory. He goes, guys, listen, I know that I was this crazy bad dad. And they get a, they get a little more backstory about, like, I don't know when you get the full scoop. They do a good job of, like, giving you parts of the story along the way. Yeah, there's a lot of flashbacks. Just a lot of flashbacks. Everywhere. Yes. But essentially what he says is, listen, your mom died, I know, but I've been hearing her voice, and she's back. And she lit, she's being held captive in this place where she's from, like the place where I met your mother, the magical forest. And it's a village. And he goes, I got to go back there and save your mom. She's in a cage. And Shang's like, you're insane. And she's not alive. This is not true. You're out of your mind. And he goes, oh, really? And he takes the girl's necklace, and he has his necklace and he puts it into this thing on the wall and he goes, check this out. And all of a sudden like water, this is the preview, Mike, there was the water when it was like slow motion, you know, comes out and it shows the forest like on the ground, like a hologram almost, but like a magical hologram, a map, even better, a magical map hologram. (laughs) And it's like the forest moving. And essentially it shows him like the time and place to be able to get through this crazy forest and make it there. And he goes, I'm going to go there. I'm taking my army. And I'm going to bust your mom out. And they're like, what if they don't want you to do that? And he goes, I'll burn the place down. I'll kill everybody. Reasonable. All right, here we go. This is where it really picks up. So then Shang-Chi heads down. They put him in the, they're like, listen, if you're not going to help me, he goes, we're not going to help you do this. And his dad's like, well, I'll go without you. He goes, I'll just put you in the dungeon. So he puts him like in this dungeon. They're not really held captive, captive. They're kind of like free walking around, but they're like, you know, keeping an eye on him. 
They go to the basement. Who do we find? Trevor Slattery. Slattery. <laughs> if OG the, Mandarin. For the for the diehard fans that knew immediately, I did like lean over to Carrie. I go, This is the fake Mandarin. He was in Iron Man 3. He was just an actor, but then they got him and he's we don't know where he's been. I know where he's been. He was in prison. And then the Mandarin, the real Mandarin, said, You're gonna come live here and you're gonna be basically my prisoner for my whole life. Yeah. What's yeah. his name? Uh the actor. Ben Kingsley. Ben there Kingsley. Ben yeah. Kingsley. He's back. Yeah, they so like ridiculous. This, so ridiculous. It almost felt a little it almost felt a little like like did you have to bring him in? You know, but like also I feel like it was one of those Marvel things that like the dad talks about the fake Mandarin, right? He's like several years ago this guy used our name and put terror in the world and he attacked Iron Man's house. He's talking about the events of Iron Man 3. And he goes, "And the name has so much fear in it that it worked." And he goes, "And then we find out he kept that guy captive." So he's down there. There's a little bit of humor. He talks about, he does his thing where he just rants about nonsense. And then out comes this little animal that doesn't have a face and it has wings. It's like a little fur pig. And it's so weird. It's the weirdest thing. And he's and Shang and Katie are like, it doesn't have a face. What is this thing? I don't know if they even, I think they did give it a name. Oh, Morris. Yes, thank you. Wow, Mike's Morris. on over there. I'm literally following along on, on Wikipedia. Who plays Morris? <laughs> <laughs> no, it just. <laughs> It's just played in by, the, uh, it's like played by Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> so we are. It looks like three paragraphs in on Wikipedia. Currently, am, am I am I going like right with it? <laughs> You're going pretty close, but you are adding tons more. Well, it was a good movie. Um, all right, so this is a big plot hole, I think, a little bit. Okay, so they're down there with the the pig thing with no face, and Tre- Trevor Slattery can't understand this thing for no reason. First of all. And he, it's talking to him, and he goes, hey, I know how to get through the forest now. Like, we don't need to wait for that timing like that guy said upstairs. I know how to get there now. So they go, okay, well, let's just go. How do they get there? Katie just drives right through the forest. And he's like, go left. And she's like, and he's like, go right. Go straight. And it's and- like, it's crazy, and it looks cool, but it's like, they, 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 they gave you this little thing in the beginning of the movie, Mike, where she's, like, driving the, one of the ballet cars really fast. And he's like, gosh, you're such a maniac driving like this. And she's like, I love NASCAR. So you're like, I guess she can drive. Maybe she's uh, gifted. Well, maybe. Future further events that we'll get to later yeah, we'll talk lead about you to believe the, that too because well, yeah. she's just a, a basic ballet driver and just straight up. We're going to hold on. Don't do it yet. We'll talk. I, I can't wait to say Oh, I'm it. not saying it. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's like, it is like ridiculous. All right. So they get there, really get like. We'll get through a big chunk of the story here. They get to the place where their mom grew up. They tell them the story about their dad. They're like, your dad's crazy. She's not here. There are demons and basically a, another realm where dark, evil type creatures live in this dark portal that lives in the village. And they're like, this is why we're here. We can't let anything come out of that thing. Someone call maybe Dweller in Darkness. The Dweller in Darkness, and I don't know what they call like the other it's minions. Minions, yeah, they, yeah. Min- and then I don't know what they call like the portal, big red door, big giant red circle like door, like scaly. Yeah, we call it scaly ass mountain. Yes, and they said the last thing, the last time this thing broke open, the Great Protector showed up and saved him. Who's the Great Protector? A big dragon. All right, cool. They make all their weapons out of this dragon. They got like scaly shields. They got scaly swords. They got like they can cut through anything. And they tell them the whole story about their mom. There's a fight scene between the lady that's running the place now, like their aunt. So I guess their mom's sister. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah. And she's like, "Fight with me, Shang. I'm gonna show you something." And the sister like gets to finally train with everybody because she wasn't allowed to when she was a kid, but now she can. And Shang's like, "All right, I'll fight you." And she's telling him, like, you have both of your parents inside of you. You know, you got the you got the rings side of you, and you got the the mom side of you that has the wind powers, and she's trying to teach him. And this is when I took my pee break. And I nailed it, didn't I? Yes. I left. I ran so hard. I I got back, and Carrie was like, that was so fast. She's like, did you wash your hands? I go, I did. I go, but if anyone saw me running out there in the theater <laughs> just now, I looked like an idiot. <laughs> and he doesn't really learn the wind powers yet. It's fine. All right, the dad shows up. He goes, "I'm here to, to find the my ex my dead wife that's not dead in that cage." Shang Chi and his sister are like, "Well, we're and Katie are all going to stand with the village, fight against you." And there's a giant fight scene that breaks out. 
what does the dad do? He walks straight to the the exit, the door they're supposed to protect for all these centuries. He gets right to it. He's the only one there. But like, there's a big war going on. Drowns his son. Has a big fight scene with his son, and his son's like, "You don't need to do this, Dad." And he's like, "I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get your mom." And he's like, "Mom's not in there." And he goes, "You're not gonna help me." And he uses the rings, and he just shoots Shang Chi probably 200, 300 yards, and like drowns him in the water supposedly. And this was the part of the movie where I leaned over to Carrie and I go, "You're about to get a dragon." <laughs> <laughs> yep. This guy opens the door. He does it. He uses Idiot. the rings. He opens the door. And Mike, these things that come out of this thing are crazy, dark, big mouth creatures. They can fly. Soul suckers. They're soul suckers. They suck souls out of people. And guess what? You can't kill them. You chop off their heads, head grows back. You shoot them, their body grows back. The only thing that can kill them is dragon scale weapons, which thankfully they have a lot of. And Shang does meet the dragon in the water face to face. And right as these things are exiting out, it's getting pretty bad. The dragon, Shang rides this dragon, water dragon. And so cool. So cool. Just beautiful, like eating all the things. And then there's another big fight scene between Shang and his dad. And this is where we find out. Shang's dad shoots the rings towards Shang. Shang discovers, just like his mom could, really, she can like stop the rings and like make them come to him. And they turn from blue to gold. And he ends up getting all of them. And his dad has none of them. And it's like this big moment. And Sean's like rolling it up, rolling it up, rolling it up. Almost like it was going to be like Dragon Ball Z. It was yes. like because he was like kind of doing this. And I thought he was going to, you know, it's going to be like he's going to blast his dad. Drops the rings and goes, don't do this. And he decides I'm not going to kill my dad. I'm going to talk to him. And that was, that got me. Because that's what it all came down to was like, what's Sean going to choose to do? You can show him all this stuff, but like he's got to choose his own future, right? Otherwise, this movie will suck. And the dad, at the last minute, because what happens, Andy? The door comes crashing down, and the big bad comes out. An anti-water dragon, essentially. A big bat-looking giant creature. A kaiju. Correct. Big-ass nasty and it's a battle basically between that thing and the dragon. And before that, though, he, the dad gets taken up by the thing. And at the last minute, instead of like fighting back with the rings, he lets his rings fly off his arms. They go into Shang's arms. And this thing sucks his dad's soul out. And his dad dies. That was effed. That was messed up. But That was messed up. I mean, I was like, it's fine. It's your fault. So. You deserve it. Good job, idiot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just a dumb villain at the end of the day. Like, I mean, just like listen to everybody telling you that like that's not your wife, you know. But still had to watch his dad get his life sucked well, out of him. And they remembered the good parts about his dad, and like there was bad parts for sure, like real bad parts. Because what do we find out? We find out that the mom got murdered by an old enemy of his dad. His dad like went shopping for groceries. He's all he's very relaxed. The mom's got him kind of being a regular dad, a good guy. This is when Shang and uh, his sister are young kids, and Shang witnesses his mom get murdered by all these like gang members. Oh, man. And remember what his dad does after that? He takes Shang with him to the bar or like a club. Kills everyone. Kills them violently. This was a violent kill for an MCU film, even. Like, I thought it went, like, pretty dark. In the, this Especially eight, with the little boy watching. Eight-year-old son just literally was sitting there watching. I was like, this is messed up. And this is, like, the turmoil inside of Shang. Of, like, I've seen all this good. And what's he learned? You pay blood with blood. But then he decided, like, I'm going to try to forgive my dad in the end. Yep. So the water dragon ends up having to, like, really do a lot of the heavy lifting here and fighting yes. this kaiju with, like, pretty much water drowning. Like, he can control water powers. So he's, like, bringing water up. This is a lot like Avatar, actually. And it's, like... The water's almost drowning this thing, but then it gets a hold of the water dragon. And this is where I learned that dragons have souls. <laughs> he starts trying to suck out the dragon's soul. And they go, if he sucks out the dragon's soul, that's it. They like that's that's too much power. We can't do it. And Shang and his sister are like at at the top of all this. They're on top of the dragon. He sees the soul coming out of the dragon, and he's like up there with the big kaiju, but his sister is falling. Like she's going to die. 
And he's like, I, I'm going to save my sister. He, she goes, go. You got to go stop him. You have the rings on your arms. And he goes, I'm not leaving you again. And he decides in that moment that he's going to stay with his sister, which is like the wrong call, really. But thankfully, an arrow comes and shoots the kaiju in the neck. Just a regular arrow with a little dragon scale on the top. Who shot it, Mike? I need you to tell me because I lost my spot. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm just going to tell you, though. It's Katie. The NASCAR driver. The NASCAR driver who practiced shooting arrows for 30 minutes the day before. <laughs> just like sh- aims up high, hits it in the neck. And I go it's over to Kara. I go, it's a big F you to Hawkeye. In my fairness, oh, the yeah. Wikipedia version says, and Katie battled the Dweller in Darkness, ultimately killing it. No mention of any arrow. Nothing. She shot a regular dragon. I mean, it's a regular arrow. She shot it a mile. Was that the ki- was that the killing blow right there? Well, that the no. One? So what it okay. was was it hit it in the neck. It l- released the grip on the dragon. Stopped sucking its soul. Right. It starts falling down, and the water dragon's like, "Now I'm really gonna drown you." And he starts really drowning him with his water powers. And Shang does the craziest. This is where it got a little wild, like visual effects wise, but I still had fun. He gets all of his rings going, like in a circle, like it goes into the dragon's like mouth, I guess, into its belly, and just starts spinning as hard as it can inside the <laughs> dragon and the bad the kaiju, I'll call it a kaiju, inside of its belly, and it just explodes, kills the thing, they close up the door. Shang Chi's a hero, Katie's a hero, the sister makes it, um, and all is well. They did it. Beautiful. Press the button. <laughs> Press the button. <laughs> uh, the movie comes to a close with uh, Katie and Sean kind of doing something they did early in the movie. Uh, they tell the story about what happened <laughs> to their friends, and their <laughs> friends are like, we just saw you a week ago. That's, there's no way that happened. And then... So funny. Basically, in the middle of this restaurant, a, a ring hole opens. <laughs> And it's Wong, and he goes, you got to come with me. He goes, you too. He says, Katie, too, you too. And he goes with them. They walk through, and they're like, and then that's it. They just close this, and then credits roll. Two end credit scenes. I love this. The yes. first one just picks right back up. It's like not even an end credit scene. It just goes, okay, what happened next? Okay, they're with Wong. They're at a table. They're looking at the rings, and he goes, I don't know what these are. These are the oldest things I've ever seen. They're not vibranium. And then you hear another voice, Bruce Banner. And then another voice, Captain Marvel, Captain Danvers. And they're going, she's like, I've never seen anything like this. It doesn't look like anything across the galaxy I've seen. Um, Bruce goes, they're not vibranium. They're not anything in in any of the books. They're not in, yeah, Wong's like, they're not in any of our books. So they might have to go to that other book place that we learned about in What If, maybe. And what else? Oh, Wong goes, yeah, they're about a thousand years old. My dad had, or Shang's like, I had my dad had them for a thousand years, and Bruce is like, they're a lot older than that. Yeah, I don't know where these came from, but I have a feeling it's going to lead to the more, Eternals, more dragons. You think Eternals? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, the Eternals is just the first thing I think of because Eternal equals like long <laughs> forever. Yeah, so. yeah, no, that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. That's what when I was talking to uh, Zach saw this movie the other day too, and we were kind of debating on that, and I. I couldn't decide if where this is going to lead to. I think it's just a maybe not though, because the the next credit scene I think is well. Hold on, before we get to that one, yeah. so Bruce, uh, Captain Marvel goes, okay, I gotta get out of here. Bruce has my number, just call him, and she leaves. And Bruce goes, she always says that I don't have her number, so I don't know how <laughs> you're gonna get a hold of her. Um, another thing to point out here: no more Smart Hulk, no more Professor Hulk. Yep, mm-hmm. and he's still wearing the uh, the sling. He's got the from, sling from the snap. Yeah, and now it was a hologram, but I was like, why would he change himself in a hologram and not his body? I think that like he's figured something out. Either he turns into the Hulk super smooth, I tweeted about this, or I think that like they're separated now. Or he just... But that would be crazy uh, to have the Hulk out on his own. <laughs> that'd be awesome. All right, so then they both leave. Wong goes, Sean, Katie, the trajectory of your lives has changed. Nothing will be the same. You were living a life that was something. It is not the same anymore. And Bruce says before he leaves, welcome to the circus. Essentially saying, like, you're on the team now. And he says, why don't you go home, get some rest, and we're going to pick this up tomorrow. And Sean and Katie look at each other, and they go, 
or and all three of them yeah. those two of them long karaoke bar just singing <laughs> the late that's night good. singing that's so good. hard all right such sec- a great scene. such a great thing right second end credit scene so this is what i think Go it ahead. might be connecting to the next movie like the sequel to this a sequel movie. this would be more sequel related but right it's the sister the f- that so maybe that maybe the rings are connected to the eternals i don't know so the sister said at the movie she goes i'm gonna go take down my dad's uh crime ring but i knew in my heart i was like well whenever they found you you were running an underground fight club and so what actually happens is she's running the underground drug or uh, fight club or whatever you want to call it the she's running the place now she's yes. sitting in her dad's chair she's like let's get to work all of the minions are there the guy with the arm is there like the knife arm and it's like okay here's another like villain but that probably like anti-hero type thing yep i agree don't you think or just She's just going to be real salty and just continues down the bad path like her dad. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe. Um, all right. We're going to wrap this thing up, man. This is so much fun. I had so much fun talking about it. Uh, how do you think we did? I think we did a, a good, nice recap there. No doubt. I mean, that was for I'm, memory, and I'm that was gonna, a week ago. I'm going to see it again very soon. But Tell me when. I'll go with you. Okay. Any other notes you got, Andy? And fi- favorite moments, top parts? Um, let's, get a, let's get a rating, too, and I'll, then I'll do mine. Honestly, just overall, visually, this is one of the most beautiful movies that they've put together. Glorious. Like, just the final forty five minutes was just like insane. Like when they go through the the for- magic forest and like th- this place is just full of like crazy looking beautiful Pokemon. Yes. <laughs> I, I said that. I go, these are like Pokemon. We didn't even talk about that, right? They get to the know. forest. It's like the just all these animals that just only exist in this place. Like a lion that's literally the size of an elephant. Yeah, and it like reminded me of like a Wakanda reveal, like to a smaller extent, kind of. Yes, because like, that's the thing, right? This place has apparently just been around this whole time. Yep, it was beautiful. But uh, overall, I mean, just the the fight scenes were unreal. It just re- unrelentless. Like it, I was so there was multiple times, even including like the last thirty minutes, where I was just on the edge of my seat the whole time, and I I cannot wait to see it again for sure. I don't know if this is this is one of those statements that like it's just true. Like I don't know if it's small minded of me, big minded, but I leaned forward to Scott afterwards. So our boy Scott went with his kids, and I leaned forward, and he goes, "That was amazing." And I go, "It honestly felt like if Mortal Kombat was cool, like if it was actually cool, because like Mortal, yeah, yeah. because it's the same. Like there's like epic powers with fighting, mm-hmm. and like I mean that's just there's some similarities there." But like even that latest Mortal Kombat movie, just like I mean, it's just like man, this is this felt weird. This was Marvel. This was Marvel Studios doing its thing with a brand new character, and I just feel like they hit the nail on the head. Like I didn't have to know anything. I love our approach with this, right? It's cool to know a little bit about the characters, but like I didn't read up on Thor before I saw Thor. I didn't really read on yeah. Shang Chi. I just went to see a good movie, and man, I just had so much fun. Like a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, look, look at this poster. It looks like a Mortal Kombat. It does. It like looks like colors. Scorpion and Sub Zero. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Might have been intentional. And this uh, image here is from the direct. Uh, appreciate the help there. Any other notes there, Andy? Other top moments you're missing? I'm glad because you. I didn't even think about the animals. That's a yeah. Part. I mean, I think what we we're talking about with Katie, like being a great driver, and all of a sudden just becoming a marksman right out of the gate with a bow and arrow. I mean, we don't know anything about her as a character. Like she could be. It almost an, felt an Avenger. like I have no clue. It almost felt like um, how they kind of do it in Star Wars. Whenever a potential Jedi has like a lot of Medichlorians or whatever, and they yeah. Yeah, like they talk about like Finn and these characters that like aren't Jedi, but that like Han Solo, right? Like he has like a level of the Force because it's just something about you know it's that special something that like helps you like guide through exactly. Well, she drove him there. She shot the arrow. Like and that was a little. It felt ridiculous, but like the fact that Wong took her in the end, you're like, is she got something else going on? Exactly. When he said you guys, and not just you, as yes. in yes. Shang Chi. So, plus we know. didn't talk about this, but definitely a little romance between Katie and Shang. Like it was like a, something that they were both like they're definitely best friends, but there was a ten percent like especially toward the end of just like and someone even her mom his mom even says like his grandma was like, when are you gonna marry her? Or something like that. Or vice versa. It was her grandma. Yeah, yeah. And she goes, when are you going to marry him? And like, there's something about that. But like, who knows? We'll see. So good. All right. How about a rating? Uh, I got it. I wrote it down like just after the movie. So You go first. All right. I know mine because I said it right I said it to Carrie as we left the theater. So I was like, I'm going to decide right now. It was so good. I can't wait to see it again. I'm going to give it a 3.7. Ooh. 
I went with a 3.6. Close. I'm going to say this, too. It feels controversial because what I'm about to say, it feels controversial because of how good this other movie is that I'm going to mention. But I mean, this was the best movie I've seen all year. Mm-hmm. That being said, I saw The Suicide Squad this year. Me and Carrie totally agreed. Night and day, different movies. Mm-hmm. And totally different things, different setup, different ways of what they're connected to and what they're doing. And just different. Just totally different. And I, I feel like the rating for Suicide Squad was also it was right around there. 3.6, 3.7, something like that. That's I have, true. I have to go back and check. But they're like, you know, they're right there. Yeah, we, got, we got two good movies this year so far. I bet we have double that. Uh, by the end i feel bad for black widow because like it just wasn't the same (laughs) i was like gosh dang you know but this just shows that like you know this could have been a movie that i easily walked out of didn't really care that much about it was fine but no i want to see it right away all right man shang chi the legend of the ten rings a brand new mcu character is here and you guessed it it's gonna be at mostly superheroes.com forward slash mcu 29th title man i can't wait to put this one in the library and I can't wait to see where we see this character next. I don't think it'll be Shang-Chi 2. I think it's going to be a mix of either Multiverse of Madness, Spider-Man. I mean, who knows? Maybe the Eternals. Like, I, I, don't, I feel like there's a potential that you see this character in What If in a later season, knowing that our later episode. Like, who knows? I hope we see a lot of them. I mean, that's why we... I don't even think we, like, gave him as much credit as we should have, but, like... Yeah, see Mulu. We did so, Yeah, what the hell? Yeah. More so made the movie, like... Didn't even mention his name, like... He's the guy. Yeah, he he was amazing. Like, I, I mean, I can't say enough. He he just did a, an amazing job. Like, that's the reason why I think I kind of got had a, so much hype for it because I would have been following him on Twitter and seeing him kind of do inter- pre interviews and stuff like that. And I was like, I just like this guy. Like, I I feel like he's just somebody that would be fun to he hang a out lot with. Of fun. Like, he's just like he has like a great personality. That interview and was hilarious. Yeah, exactly. Like he was hilarious on the interview. Normally, Phase I'm just Zero. Like, if you don't subscribe, Phase Zero is the uh, comicbook.com podcast, Marvel podcast. Yep, exactly. And I mean, it's it was great. Like he he was just seemed like like one of us. And I can't wait to learn more about the ring. They didn't answer anything about the rings yet. There's gonna be more backstory, more uh, even deeper. Where will it all go? Uh, can't wait to do it, man. MCU is here, rocking and rolling. And the next one we'll talk about will be the Eternals, and you can find that in our MCU library too. It's all at mostly superheroes.com. Let's talk about what's coming up. All right. A few things coming up on the show. Um, I mean, we picked the perfect time of our lives to create this freaking podcast. Uh, mm-hmm. We have so much to talk about. It's every week. It seems like we got a show or a movie. And Marvel Phase 4 is here. Uh, the Eternals will be next November 5th. Uh, we're still talking about what if each week. And we'll have Hawkeye come in, uh, in the third week of November right now. November 24th, I think, is that. Uh, haven't heard anything about Miss Marvel in a while, uh, but that's still it. Still says 2021 when you look it up on the internet, but there's no date yet for that. And that's supposed to be a TV show, Miss Marvel, and then of course Spider Man Far From Home, which we got that trailer a couple weeks ago. We can't wait. We'll keep it going. And then for the DC Titans, will keep happening. HBO Max, we're six in, you know, seven or eight to go. We'll keep it happening. And then Sony's Spider Verse. This is the big thing. This is the big thing I was going to bring up today. We've talked about these movies recently. The Spider-Man No Way Home trailer dropped. Don't need to get into it right now, but if you've seen it, you know exactly where we're going with this. We're mixing franchises. Sony's coming into play. Villains, maybe some heroes. Who knows? And because of this, and just because we want to, we're going to, we're going to watch all the Spider-Man films. Mm-hmm. All of them. We're going to do the Raimi films, one, two, three. We're going to do the Garfield, one and two. And then we're also going to do Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse because we've never done a review of that movie and we have to because it's one of it's, it's I've awesome. seen it so many times. Okay. Is that cool with you guys? Of course. What do you, I think we should start with into the Spider-Verse and then do the Garfields. Oh, go backwards kind of. Or what do you guys think? Because I'm thinking like it'd be more fun to end with those Rami films, Rami films. Tobey Maguire. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we should hit it first. I'm fine with that. Just get Spider Man Two out of the way, not, ca- not the Doc Ock one, but the other one, the Amazing Spider Man Two. Yeah. Well, that's what I was saying. Like, kind of get those done. Uh, but I like I've never really talked about those in depth, so I feel like we should. So I'll be down. Um, well, you know, we got a lot of other things we're trying to watch. We got DC stuff we're trying to watch, but with all the Marvel stuff happening, this is taking priority. So, guys, get those Spider Man films ready. We you, we talked about it in episode thirty five, I think, uh, just a couple ago, um, one or two ago, and we talked about where you can find all these movies 
Um, you can watch them mostly on Stars, it seems like, Hulu, Live, and all that. But either way, start tracking down the Spider-Man films because we're going to be talking about them. All right. That was it. That was the whole podcast. I could I, feel your excitement about the movie. Yeah. So it made me a little more Rate, excited. Well, give, our, give our rating or give our, so he rates, our discussion a rating. Yeah. So he rates our review of Shang-Chi. What's that? 2.9. Oh, <laughs> God. That I'll give us a round of applause, but your first. What happened? You talked for probably 30 minutes about the first quarter of the movie. No. And then you sped it up. You're crazy. I promise. Well, the first leg of the movie needs the exposition. That's, this is an origin story. And then you kept saying, like, oh, and then we got more exposition, and that's what was, like, you just kept going back what to do we, the exposition. What do we say on this podcast? Origin stories are tough. you got to give a lot of info. I know, but I'm saying Wikipedia had six paragraphs. We're, I mean, The first two paragraphs you talked about you for the most learn about, amount of time. If you want to learn about your movies on Wikipedia, you'd be my I guest. was just following along. <laughs> what did it say? Katie defeats the monster. That's basically what you said. That's not what, that's I, not what happened, though. shot an arrow into the neck of a monster. That's what I said. I'm just saying. Two point Your exposition was very... Well, here's the real question. Your rating, you can take that for what it is. <laughs> do, do you want to see this movie? I want to see it more after you guys gave that review. That's but... all I need to hear. Same. That's a 4.0 in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> perfect review. <laughs> Another perfect review. All right, PC Mike uh, with a 2.9. Ouch, man, cut us deep. Fresh, too. Uh, give us a sign-off. And what, do you got, what are you looking forward to in life right now? Uh, Chiefs game Sunday? Uh, You're going. I'm going. I'll be sleepy Monday. but uh, <laughs> In Kansas City. In Kansas City. Okay. We're a couple hours from here. But uh, you guys made me excited for the movie, so I will watch it. Cool. It won't be one like I say I watch it, and then don't. Um, hopefully it comes to on demand soon. Yeah, forty five, forty four days now. Forty, so. yeah, yeah, thirty eight. <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, yeah, like you said, great time to be a fan. And we'll keep doing it if they keep pumping it out. So it looks like this will happen for a while. Yeah, we're very lucky adults that love superheroes. That's for sure. Uh, Andy, what do you got for the squad? That was a lot of fun today, dude. Uh, uh, yeah, good luck to everyone with the upcoming football season. Hope everyone wins all your bets, all your fantasy teams. None of your players get hurt like mine did today. Um, it's all going to be okay, and it's going to be a great, great fall with uh, football. We got hockey coming up, and that whole coming up slide that we just had two slides ago that we're going to be talking about as well. So crazy. How are we going to have time to do anything else? I mean, I barely have enough time right now to watch all this stuff. Yeah. And, I mean, thank God I'm not a diehard football fan like you guys, but I am in a couple fantasy leagues, you know, with the whole with the company and all that kind of stuff. I play in the leagues. I like the camaraderie. gives me a reason to, like, Join the party, have a little fun, and it sounds like we're going to be at your house eating some uh, some pizza, some wings, and kind of doing the whole American football Sundays. Yes, please. Well, I say Sundays, but I mean Thursday, Sunday, Monday. Saturdays for college. Yeah, a lot. It's every Saturday, day, really. Yeah, you guys like college, too, don't you? Friday night, they usually do college. You can get football probably seven nights a week. If you want it, it's there. All right, it'll make it. It'll make its way into the show. We can tell you that. When the big stuff happens, you can count on us talking about it, the big news. We might get a couple highlights here and there. And, of course, mostly superheroes. We thank you so much for subscribing and checking us out and telling friends and family. Go get us on Patreon for exclusive content, early episodes, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Facebook, YouTube. Basically, if you're on the Internet and you know how to type mostly superheroes, you're going to find us. We can't wait to see you next week and every week after that, and we'll talk to you next time. Take it easy.